Hey guys, welcome back to part two of the DIY flight controller series. And in today's video, we're going to be exploring the dynamics of our quadcopter. So I'm going to be splitting this video up into two parts. In the first part, I'm going to be looking at the various degrees of freedom this thing has and the two reference frames in which we operate in. And in the second part, I'm going to be looking at the actual equations of motion that describe how this moves. So let's quickly start by talking about the various degrees of freedom this thing has. Now we have six degrees of freedom overall, and that consists of three translational plus three rotational degrees. So the translational degrees of freedom are motion in the x, the y, and the z axes. And the rotational ones, for now you can think of it as pitch, roll, and yaw. So let's start by talking about the two reference frames in which we operate. The first reference frame is called the fixed reference frame, and that is the perspective of somebody outside standing on the ground looking at the quadcopter as it does all its crazy tricks. Now the second reference frame is called the body reference frame, and that is the perspective of somebody on the quadcopter sitting on it right here as it moves and rotates. So that reference frame is moving with the quadcopter. And the thing is, we typically want to operate in the first. So for example, if we're commanding the quadcopter to stay at a 15 degrees angle relative to the ground, well right there, we've said it all, we're relative to the ground. So we want a 15 degree angle in the fixed reference frame. But the thing is, our sensor readings are all on the body reference frame because our gyro, our accelerometer is on the body. So the readings we get are not in the fixed reference frame. We need to convert it somehow. And same thing with the torques that we apply on the quadcopter via the motors. Well, those motors are on the quadcopter. So we're applying torques that are on the body reference frame. Okay, so stepping back to the degrees of freedom for now, I'm going to tell you that we're only going to care about the rotational ones for now. And the reason for that is the way most of us fly FPV quadcopters is the flight controller itself is only controlling the rotational degrees of freedom. It doesn't actually have any position feedback. We're not actually telling the quadcopter where to go. We're telling the quadcopter what angle to take if we're flying in stabilized mode or perhaps what angular velocities to take if we're flying in the rate mode. We're actually controlling the position as a human from the outside. The controller, the flight controller itself is only controlling the angles, if that makes sense. Now, of course, you could include some position control if you add GPS and things, but for now, let's ignore that. Let's just say we're trying to control the various angles that this can take and the various angular velocities that this can take. So the focus of today's video is to find the equations that describe our quadcopter's dynamics. The fundamental equation that we're going to be applying is Newton's second law for rotating objects. So while we have F equals MA for translating objects, we also have an equivalent, which is torque is equal to the moment of inertia times angular acceleration or tau is equal to J alpha. And I'm going to rewrite the alpha or angular acceleration as the first derivative of angular velocity with respect to time. So I typically use omega to describe angular velocity. So our symbol for angular acceleration is omega with a dot above it, which says differentiate this once with respect to time. So tau is equal to J omega dot. Cool, so now what we have is one equation that relates our torque that we apply on an object to its angular acceleration. If we integrate this once, we can get our angular velocity. If we integrate this again, we can get our angular position. So is this all we need to describe the equations of motion for the quadcopter? Well, not quite, because we have three rotational degrees of freedom. So we actually need three equations. So we have to apply this t is equal to j omega dot in three different axes. Well, we can do that as a matrix or a vector equation. So let's rewrite our torque as being a vector of torques. So we have our tau in the x-axis, our tau in the y-axis, and our tau in the z-axis. And this follows the right-hand rule convention. So if we have an axis like this, a positive torque is going counterclockwise about it. For our quadcopter, if we take, let's say, this is the x-axis, a positive torque about the x-axis is a pitch up. A positive torque, if this is our y-axis, a positive torque in the roll axis is this way. And a positive torque in the yaw axis would be this way. Now this value of j, the moment of inertia, is different in the x, y, and z axes. And I'm going to give them the symbols j sub xx for the moment of inertia about the x-axis, j sub yy for the y-axis, and j sub zz for the z-axis. And we can put all this together in one big matrix that I'm going to call the inertia tensor, where we have jxx, jyy, jzz across the leading diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Now the inertia tensor is actually a whole other topic of discussion and the only reason it has this form is because I've carefully chosen my origin and axes to coincide with 
the center of mass of this object and the principal axis of rotation. Now don't worry if that makes no sense to you because this isn't really quite important right now for what we're doing, but just take the inertia tensor for now as having three components across the leading diagonal, which is the moment of inertia about the x, the y, and the z axes, and no other terms anywhere. Okay, so now we can rewrite Newton's second law equation as a vector equation. So the torque vector is equal to the J matrix times the angular acceleration vector. So tau x, tau y, tau z is equal to the J matrix times omega dot x, omega dot y, omega dot z. So isn't that all we need to do? We have our angular accelerations in all axes. Well, not quite. And the reason for that is these angular accelerations that we have are in the body reference frame. The torques, they're in the body reference frame. The inertia matrix, that's in the body reference frame. So, well, I mean, these angular accelerations are also in the body reference frame. But we want these angular accelerations in the fixed reference frame. So how do we convert from this body reference frame to the fixed reference frame? And the answer can be found in, you know, any sort of mechanics data book, something like this. If I just open this up to page two, we have this equation right here. So now applying this equation to our Newton's second law, we have this final equation. And that states that the angular acceleration in the fixed reference frame is equal to the inverse of the inertia matrix times tau minus omega cross j omega. And the derivation for that is really left up to you as an exercise if you want to go that way. But this is our final equation that describes how our quadcopter accelerates due to given torques. And if we just integrate this once, we now have our angular velocities in the fixed reference frame. And if we integrate this again, we have our angular positions in the fixed reference frame. Okay, so I'm going to end this video with this equation that we just talked about really clear in your minds. So the key takeaway from this is that now we have a way to describe a relationship between the angular accelerations in the fixed reference frame to the various torques that act on the quadcopter in its own body reference frame. And in the next video, I'll start talking about how these torques actually come about. And we're going to look at a state-based description of this system. As always, if you're confused about anything, leave a comment down below. And there are some links in the description below that go through what I just talked about in a little bit more detail. So if you're the kind who really wants to see the derivation of these equations, well, it's all down there below. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and I'll catch you guys next time.